Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a little bit more comprehensive look at the AV20S, which I installed in the airplane about three weeks ago. The reason I installed this piece of equipment is because I replaced the original analog clock. They call this a seven-day clock. It's a wind-up uh, clock that was installed as original equipment in 1966. So I was initially looking at digital clocks to replace it with, and then I came across the AV20S and it seemed like the best solution because it offers far more than just a clock. I did a video um, on a flight I took over the Cascade Mountains to Winthrop, Washington and talked a little bit about it and uh, I was pretty excited about it. And I mentioned in that video that I'd be doing more comprehensive reviews. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a deeper look. We're parked in the hangar right now. Uh, we're gonna go through some of the features and then we'll take it up for a flight test. So here we're gonna power up, there you can see it booting. It shows the software version 1.2. Um, of course, it's not gonna display airspeed and it won't display that until uh, you reach at least 40 knots and then the engine timer begins timing. You can see that it's warming up. That's what this flasher indicates. Uh, bus voltage 12.7 volts and outside air temperature 45 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition to true airspeed, you can cycle through um, a couple of these different options. One here is a Greenwich Mean Time or UTC time, local time 1311. Uh, density altitude, pretty cool feature. Uh, we're showing minus 400 feet here at Tacoma Narrows Airport. The airport's actually at 295 feet in elevation, so it's a nice, cool day with nice, dense air. There's the angle of attack indicator in the lower right-hand side there, and it's showing about three degrees as it sits on the ground. Um, so continuing on, as you notice here, this lower arrow, there's an engine runtime, and you can reset these by clearing by pressing both buttons here. The engine runtime is going to come on when it detects that there's a uh, bus voltage increase due to the alternator charging the battery. So once it senses that, the engine runtime will start, and then the flight timer will begin once you reach at least 40 knots. This is a count up timer, which can come in handy uh, for switching fuel tanks or if I'm in a holding pattern and I'm timing each leg in the hold, uh, typically one minute. Um, I would go ahead and set by pressing both of these buttons. Anytime there's an option indicated in the middle here at the bottom, you would press both of these buttons. And here I'm going to cycle over to that's minutes. I'm going to go ahead and select one minute. And then I'm going to, again, here's the option at the bottom to accept. I'm going to press both buttons together. Now my countdown timer begins at one minute. And simply by pressing this upper left button, the countdown timer begins. And then when it reaches zero, it's going to give an audio alert. And I do have the audio uh, cable attached to the back of the D-sub connector that goes to the back of this. So I would get an audio alert in my headset. I do have the audio fed directly into my Zulu 3 and so it would tell me to uh, reset my timer. To stop it, I'm simply gonna press that same button to reset it, I'm gonna press and hold that button. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna continue. There's a count up timer here. Uh, so you, can, you have two different timers indicating at the top here, timer two. So again, going back, that's timer one. Um, again, that's a count up. So I just simply, it's a stopwatch. So I simply press that and it starts counting up until I stop it and then I reset it by pressing and holding the button. So as you can see, there's now three pages to the left, three pages to the right, continuing on. This is a dual graph um, mode, and that's something I'm gonna use when I set it up in flight. Uh, right now, I think by default, the angle of attack indicate, the angle of attack limit, which is right here, this red indicator to the right, is set by default at 15 degrees. Um, it's showing the the current angle of attack here is this little carrot on the right-hand side to the left-hand side is G-load showing currently one G. Um, I don't remember what it comes set at the factory, but that's something I'm gonna go ahead and set at some point in the near future. So you can clear the peak right here by pressing both buttons together. There the peak is cleared. And so this is something that is typically used when you're setting up your G-loads and your angle of attack limits, both low and high. Moving on, uh, this is probably my single favorite feature, which is a backup. 
to the attitude indicator and the slip skid indicator. It also has an angle of attack indicator here in the upper right hand side. Now, the cool thing about this is if you reach critical angle of attack, depending upon your settings in the airplane or in the AV20, uh, the screen will switch to angle of attack and it will start flashing red and send an audio alert. That's the setup page. So let's go ahead and cycle through and we're gonna go ahead back to here and we're gonna cycle different modes. So you can, as you can see, you can get rid of the angle of attack and the slip skid indicator by pressing that button. Now you have purely an attitude indicator. So there are options depending on which page you select and how you want it to display in the airplane at any given time. This is the edit mode. Again, something in, indicated at the bottom center is activated by pressing both bottom buttons together. This gives your system information and that's gonna show the model number, part number, and the version of software. I'm gonna sit okay to that. And this is a page enable mode. So right now I have all the pages enabled, but you might not want all of those uh, at any given time because it increases the time that you have to cycle through each page. Uh, again, right now I'm gonna leave them this way, but you don't have to. So going back, so again here at the center bottom is back, so I have to hit both, both buttons together. Now I'm gonna go down here to audio alerts. And if I select that option, it's by default set to timer one, timer two, angle of attack limit and G limit. So I'm gonna get audio alerts on each of those. And if I don't want that, I can certainly deselect any one of those. Now we're gonna go back and uh, audio volume. You won't be able to hear that right now because um, it's it's going to be coming through the headset, but the audio volume uh, can be set, uh, and I have it right now at level two or three, I think, uh, because it's really pretty loud by default. So angle or, uh, the setting at three seems to be more than enough for me. Um, so outside air trim, um, I have an outside air temperature uh, probe underneath the left wing. I'll show that here in a video in a second. And here we have the temperature probe, which I mounted uh, just on the outside of the left main wheel. Uh, there it is right there. That's manufactured by Davtronics. You basically, when you set up your, your probe, you have an offset to match the ambient temperature. And so I have it set right now at minus 37, which gives me a uh, indication right now of 48 degrees Fahrenheit, which matches the digital thermometer I have in the hangar. And it also matches ATIS. Uh, when I'm getting ready to take off, I check it against that as well. So I'm going to say okay to that. Um, going down to miscellaneous options. Um, right now I have the temperature in Fahrenheit. You can see that the temperature in Celsius is X'd out here. Blue background, I have X'd out. I prefer the black background. True air speed, um, I have in miles per hour as opposed to knots. So you can see that that's X'd out. Um, the G force and angle of attack pop ups um, are automatic so when you get into a, a critical angle of attack or a critical g load uh, the screen will default to that display only and give you a warning i'm going to leave it that way i prefer that if i didn't want that i would deselect one of those so these again are all the options so we're going to go back again and here's your angle of attack limits so right now, pre-stall angle set at 15 degrees, cruise angle set at zero. And scrolling down, these are your G limits. I'm gonna select that there. Uh, positive G alert right now is set for two Gs, which is pretty much a 60 degree bank turn. Negative Gs is set at minus two. And then finally, this is a hard calibration mode. Um, if you select that, you can do a hard calibration and it basically synchronizes the internals of the instrument. Um, this is something you would do on the ground, engine off. And we're gonna exit. So now in this dual graph mode, if you hit the upper button, that's angle of attack only display that's G-Load display, a graphic display of G-Load. And then if you hit one more time, it shows G-Load displayed as a numerical value. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and uh, start up the airplane, take it up. And uh, for the first time, I want to check the angle of attack limits and those sorts of things, audio alerts. And see if I can find a way to feed that audio alert into the uh, camera as we record. 
So that's it. That's our, our ground uh, overview of the AV20S. We'll see you in the air. Okay, today finally got around to doing the flight test for the AV20S instrument that I installed recently. Now, I've used it quite a bit, but I haven't had a chance really to do a kind of a comprehensive uh, test and video. So we're going to do that today. We're going to put the airplane into a stall, a couple of stalls, and see how the um, angle of attack indicator works. And uh, we'll test a few other features on it. Hopefully it's being captured okay. I do have a POV camera on linear, and I have it pointed downward. Uh, so the view out the windscreen is going to be kind of crummy. But I do have a wing camera. I'm going to turn that on here in a few minutes. And uh, again, we'll run it through all the gyrations and look at all the different features uh, in flight. And uh, post this to YouTube. I've been meaning to do it for a long time here. So I'm really impressed with... Uh, with the instrument, it's doing a great job. It does have one minor issue. I do have to send it back, which kind of is a bummer. I have to send it back to uh, New Avionics. And the reason is that it's supposed to read zero miles per hour or zero knots until it reaches 40 knots. And then it begins displaying the airspeed. Uh, but this one is displaying the airspeed at 40 knots while on the ground doing zero knots. So, in other words, its starting point is 40 knots. However, it does read accurately. Once you reach 40 knots on your ground roll before takeoff, it starts registering a normal airspeed. So, uh, anyway, what, what that causes is when it's, when it's registering 40 knots on the ground, the, uh, the flight timer starts. It starts even when you're not flying. So, that's kind of a bummer. Anyway, I sent a, uh, a message to them, to UAvionics, and they said, go ahead and send it back. So that is one little glitch I did want to point out. Okay, we're going to go through our run-up here, and I'll pick the video back up when we are ready to take off. Tacoma Tower, Cherokee 7428, Romeo, holding short runway 35, west departure. Cherokee 7428, Romeo, Tacoma Tower, number 2, hold short runway 35. Hold short runway 35, number 2, 28, Romeo. Okay, so right now, if you can see it, and uh, again, I'll blow this up when I do the video, uh, I'm displaying density altitude showing 300 feet, uh, which matches field elevation, which is 295 feet. So density altitude is uh, equal to field elevation today based on the temperature, outside air temperature. 72 Charlie, contact Seattle departure. Is actually quite mild, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, if you can see that right there. We're showing our bus voltage, but the engine running is right where it should be at 14 volts. Skoman Arrows Tower, this is... Skyhawk, November 602, November Delta, with you on the RNAV 35 approach at 2,000, uh, about uh, four and a half miles south of Kepo. So here we're displaying the, so uh, it's showing the airspeed, as I said earlier, six. even though we're doing zero knots, it's showing, you know, it's, it thinks we're moving, we'll it's approach, behaving as we'll if we're, we're, final approach fix to we're moving at, at about 40 knots, that's something that we have right to fix. In and contact ground. Greenwich Mean Time, 2127, local time, 1327. You could also display those. I have a 24-hour clock. You can also display it. Turn that down just a little bit. You can also display them in a, a non-24-hour uh, version. So, anyway, we're going to cycle through some of the views. See what I see? I was talking about the engine runtime is is fine. That's That matches when we started the engine, but the problem is uh, that the flight timer... Uh, started at the same time, even though we're not flying, and that's a a result again of the of the uh, instrument thinking that we're thinking that we're actually moving. So that's got to be fixed. That's a uh, count up timer. Uh, you can cycle uh, through the the second view uh, down below. That's a count up timer, and then these are the the parameters. This graph allows you to set your your limits for G load and angle of attack. I haven't actually I have. I set my angle of attack. Uh, warning indicator to take place at 17 degrees, angle of attack. Cessna 606, November Delta, turn a little bit to the southeast. You're going to follow company Cessna. It's on, the, uh, on about an eight-mile GPS final. Turn southeast and follow the company Cessna 606, November Delta. And I set the uh, straight and level flight for three degrees. So anyway, those are set. G-load is set uh, to send Cessna a warning. Cessna 6 November Delta, follow the Cessna on the go. And make left traffic runway 35, clear for takeoff. Okay, there goes November Delta. Here for takeoff, runway 35, 556, November Delta. 
Tacoma Tower, November 94659 at uh, 3-5 in sequence, uh, waiting for takeoff. Okay, sir. So it's 94659, Comitara, hold short, runway 35. Holding short. Here's our backup attitude indicator and slip skid indicator. Nine. System setup page. And again, we're back to the distance density altitude. We'll go ahead and display the airspeed. Now, what you'll see is on the ground roll, when we, uh, when we reach 40 knots or about 46 to 47 miles an hour, it will begin to register our actual airspeed. And 2 November Delta is at the final approach fix. Cherokee 7428 Romeo, follow Sust on to go. West departure, runway 35, let's take off. Clear for takeoff, west departure. We'll follow that airplane on the go to it, Romeo. Sust on 602 November Delta, runway 35, clear low approach. Clear low approach, runway 35, to November Delta. All right, DG's looking good. Feet off the brakes, full power. Cessna 602 Engine instruments in the green. The airport, drive your phones on a four-mile Power phone. available for takeoff, showing 2,400 RPM. Sarah's being chased by. Cardinal 177, Steve. Julia Victor. This uh, Cherokee on the go is westbound. Pass outside of them northwest, runway 35, clear for takeoff. Victor, Victor, Victor cleared for takeoff. So there we see, what are we seeing, 94 miles per hour. Uh, we're showing 84 on our indicator, on our airspeed indicator. Tacoma Tower, 41 Alpha Charlie, report midfield downwind, runway 35, Alpha Charlie. Lots of clouds over the Olympics today. That would not be a good place to go. So that's a 9465 downer. The sun goes northwestbound, make left traffic. Runway 35, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 35, left traffic 659. Okay, we're going to make our turn out here to the west. Get out over the water Six, and then five, we'll eight, do Charlie. some maneuvers at continue about 3,000. 5 Charlie, continue downwind. All right, airspeed showing 107. The true airspeed is showing uh, 108, and uh, we're showing an indicated of about 97. There's 100 right there, 100 indicated and 111 true. Um, I'd have to do some calculations to see if that's accurate. I don't know exactly how to test that right now. But uh, let's cycle through some of the other views. And again, that, that, um, that's kind of worth its weight in gold there. That backup attitude indicator, I'm going to go ahead and trim my ailerons here a little bit. It's showing. All right, that's good. We got the slip skids kind of ma is it matching exactly the turn corner to slip skid, so that's great. And our attitude indicator is matching our uh, our actual instrument on the airplane, so that's great news. Everything's so good so far, so good right there. Uh, we're gonna bypass the setup page now. So this again is the is the graph that allows you to make to set your parameters. That's the angle of attack indicator. Uh, right there, showing about three degrees level flight. That's that's right where it should be. Um, we can change that view. That's a G load in a graph. We can show G load in a numeric value. That's 1.0, which is again straight and level, which is where it should be. Uh, so for now, let's go ahead and uh, put it into a stall. So we should see the stall warning indicator come on right about the same time that we get the angle of attack warning. Uh, and it should say, well, the audible would say angle or check angle. Um, I do have that plugged into my headset. However, I muted it. But it, it'll be hard to miss. There'll be bright red uh, flashing indicators on the, uh, on the AV-20S. So anyway, let's go ahead and put it into uh, a stall. Let's bring the power back here to about 1800 RPMs and we'll slowly bring it up. So there we see the angle of attack indicator coming up. There's 70 coming up on 60. Angle. There's the stall warning. I'm going to put it into a full-fledged stall here. I'm going to keep pulling back. So there you see it flashing angle, and there's the brake. So full power, nose down, 
Airspeed there is 90, put it back up into a climb. All right, so that's uh, looking good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it into a, uh, let's go ahead and switch it over here to G-Load. I'm going to put it into a steep turn. And um, there is some air traffic, 1,700 feet below us. I'm going to make a steep turn to the right. Uh, everything looks clear. All right, so we're going to put it in a steep turn. We should be increasing our G-Load as we do this. There's 30 degrees. See the G-Load indicator increasing. I'm going to try to get it into 60 degrees here. G loads increasing. Should be seeing about two G's at 60, at 60 degrees. There it is. There's the G load in warning. Now I'm going to go ahead and level it off. That's good. Now I'm going to put it into the numerical uh, G load indicator, which is right there. We should see close to two G's uh, when we reach 60 degree bank angle, or right at two, really, it should be. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring it up to about 2,400 RPMs. I'm going to put it back into a right turn, we'll enter into a steep turn, uh, try to get it close to 60 degrees. See the G load increasing right there? Coming up on 45 degrees. G load showing 1.1, 1.2. Trying to get it over here to 60 degrees, 1.3. There's 60 degrees, 1.7. And there we got the warning at 1.7. So if you go to the graph, it'll it'll show you your peak load and peak angle of attack during the flight and that's where you would set up your parameters but like I said I've got it set for a G load of 2.0 uh, to give me the warning of course it sent me the warning it looked like it, it happened at about 1.7 well you could definitely feel your body weight double pretty much uh, pretty much where it should have right at 2 G's All right, so uh, everything so far so good. I mean, uh, again, this is the first time I've really put it through the gyrations. All right, well, that's it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I'm kind of bummed that I have to send it back in for for that uh, recalibration or whatever it is they do. They reflash it to get that uh, airspeed indication back to zero where it should be until you reach 40 knots. But um, apart from that, I mean, I'm amazed by its capabilities. My favorite feature is right there, the backup attitude indicator and slip skid uh, for instrument flying. Pretty cool stuff.